Hi everyone, it's Mark here and I hope that you've been enjoying these videos that come out after the sermons uh, to help you study through the Word of God and through Galatians as we've been going through Galatians the last couple of weeks. Now if you were at church on Sunday morning or even in Sunday evening, as I believe Steve did a great job of expounding some of these truths even further from the book of Romans, you would have understood that there were three main takeaways that I wanted every single person to take home. One was that, first of all, the law, the Ten Commandments, the, the, the requirements that were put in order for us to obtain righteousness could not save us. Even though if the law could be kept, it could perhaps have saved us, no one could keep it, and so the law could not save us. And Paul addresses this in Galatians 3, from verses 13 all the way to verses 22. He says, for example, that the blessing of Abraham comes through the promise of God's Spirit, through faith. He says that the law did not annul or add to the promises made to Abraham's seed, and that seed is Christ. He says that the law did not replace the promise God made to Abraham that only came 430 years after the promise had been made. And so clearly we can see that there's this whole idea that God had established a, or should we say he'd officiated officially a covenant between himself and Abraham's seed that he would ultimately fulfill. That his covenant with Moses and Israel at the time could not replace but it kind of was a guardian or a stop gap to try and protect them, to imprison them, so to speak, under sin until the coming of the Messiah and him setting them free. Secondly, that salvation comes through the promise and it doesn't come through the law. So clearly you can see that God's promise to us is that he would come and save us and there was nothing we could do to save ourselves. The only way we can partake in the salvation is to actually believe that he has come to save us. And then lastly, that there's a consequence or a, an ultimate effect that happens. And that, that this promise of salvation doesn't just save us from all the things in life, but it actually saves us into a new family, where God adopts us as his sons and daughters and equips us with the truth of his word and his spirit so that we can ultimately walk in the authority and power that he has for us. So yes, today, I want you to just think about this. Galatians 3, verses 13, all the way to the end of the chapter, and then Galatians 4, chapter 1, all the way to verse 7, explains just how all of this transpired. That God had made a way where man could not make a way, and that he had adopted us as his sons into his kingdom. That means that he has completely set us free and that he has delivered us from the tyranny of sin and that he has given us the power to overcome. So as you hear this, I'd like you to consider the following question. How free from sin can you be? If Jesus has paid the price, if God has redeemed us, if we have been brought into him and we are now one with him, just how free from sin can we be? I look forward to hearing your discussions and the outcomes of your discussions. So God bless you. Have an awesome week. And may you grow in the Lord and walk in all that he has for you. Thank you.